A skydiver jumps out of an airplane at 3,000 meters above ground when the airplane's speed is 50 meters per second. She opens up the parachute in midair so she could land with a speed of only 5 meters per second. How much mechanical energy is lost to air resistance during the fall? The person plus the parachute pack together is 60 kilograms. So we're going to start with the working energy theorem. The work done by non-conservative forces equals to the change in total mechanical energy. And this time, the work done by the non-conservative force is not zero because there is the air resistance doing work, taking energy away, which means the initial mechanical energy and the final mechanical energy, they are not equal. Because the air resistance is taking mechanical energy away and turns it into heat, so we're going to expect to have more energy at the beginning and the less at the end. Let's see, initially the skydiver is up high, so there is MGY, and uh, the skydiver has the same speed as the airplane, so the skydiver would also be moving at 50 meters per second. So the skydiver has kinetic energy, one half mv squared, and she also has mgy, 3,000 meters above ground. So if you do this calculation, you'll get uh, this much. At the end, right before she lands, she has uh, only that much speed. So it's one half mv squared. And right before she lands, her mgy would be zero. So this gets uh, 750 joules, which means uh, essentially she and the parachute pack has lost almost all of the mechanical energy. Only a little bit is left. The difference is the amount that's lost. So the bigger side minus the smaller side. And we can round it. If we round it, it's going to be this, this many joules. So the difference is the amount that's lost. Or, of course, we can just use that equation. The delta E is the final minus the initial. Of course, if you plug in the final minus the initial, what you're going to get is negative 1.874 times 10 to the 6 joules. This is uh, negative because the work done by the air resistance is uh, negative because uh, air resistance takes energy away. But if we are looking for how much energy is lost to air resistance, then the answer will only be the positive part, because that's the amount that's being lost. For the kind of energy conservation problems we encounter in this course, a system usually starts with some initial mechanical energy, and then the system is left to use that initial energy to run its own course. It can be a parachutist, starting with uh, up high, MGY, and some kinetic energy, so she can go down. Or Tarzan running with kinetic energy so he can swing up using a vine. Or we can look at the roller coasters in the Six Flags theme park in Maryland. Except for Joker's Jinx, each ride starts with motors pulling coaster carts up high to give the system a lot of MGY and a little bit of kinetic energy. And then for the rest of the ride, the coaster carts rely on this initial mechanical energy to go through the rest of the ride. If we ignore friction and air resistance, the system's total mechanical energy would stay constant. If we consider friction and air resistance, the coaster would end with less mechanical energy even before the brakes slow the carts down to a stop at the end. In the case of Joker's Jinx, it uses a set of linear induction motors to accelerate the carts to 60 miles per hour in the first three seconds. The trains are given a lot of kinetic energy at the beginning, so they can use the energy to take the rest of the course on its own.